This program does simple calculations such as plus, minus, multiply, division, power of, and we've also got a quick um, option. The program though takes two numbers and then based on user's input it will perform the mathematical operations. So if I run the program and I put the value 2 and then 2 again and then I get a menu and let's say I choose number 1 so it will give me the addition of 2 plus 2. But what happens if I put in a letter like a letter or string uh, input such as the number 2 and I hit enter this is going to give me an input mismatch exception as it tries to, it's, it's expecting a double value but instead I gave it a string and that caused the program to crash. So in this video I'm going to show you how to, so, how to um, handle this using an if statement or if statements. So to start off I'm going to create a method right below um, the other methods and this is a continuation of a program we wrote in um, in video number 45 if you wanted to refer back to that one feel free to do that so my um, method is going to check any string input so it's going to be expecting a string and I'm going to define my variable as user entry and then it's going to return either true or false so I'm going to define a boolean that is named has string that is set to false. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually send any user input as a string and then I'm going to check that value if it's got any text or string um, values this is going to return true. And so if it returns true then I won't be uh, then I'll ask the user to make sure that they enter a, a, a number. So that's the point or that's what I'm aiming for. Okay now in the end I'm going to return has string so this will be either true or false now at this point it's still false so I need to do some work here to make it turn into true if this entry it has any strings so I'm going to loop uh, using the while loop and I need to declare a variable called index uh, when I learn how to spell and I give it the value 0 and so what I'm planning to do is loop through um, each index of the string and check if it's got any letters. So assuming that the user puts in um, 1, 2 uh, and then says 20 and then another 20 like this. So what I'm planning to do is I would loop through each index of this string and check if it has any letters. So while index is less than user entry so to know that the how many letters or how many um, characters or chars my string has I could access the length method like so okay so I'm going to um, now get in the loop and now I'm going to make a condition that if is if this condition has anything more than the numbers 0 to 9 then it does have a string so what I'm basically saying here is if user entry uh, and I'm checking each character at a time and I'm using the char right method index and if this index is um, is between 0 and 9 then so between 0 and I have to use user entry again And again, I'm checking the index. If it is between the range of 0 and 9, and because it's a string, so we are checking the values of numbers as individual characters. Um, it seems like I've got an issue with my... Oh, okay. So let me just undo this. And not equal to 9. Okay. All right. So what what this basically is saying is um, is if the user entry is within the range of zero and nine, so we know this is a number. But what I plan to say is if that's not true, okay. So if that's not true, 
then I know that this has a string. So here I could say has string is equal to true. So what we're saying here, if it is any other value other than 0 or 9, we know that that's not a digit. So it's it's got some letters. I of course need to also increment my index so that we can move from the first letter to the next and so on. Index plus plus and so I guess our method is now complete. So let's see how we can use this. So when we are um, getting the numbers from here, a few changes has to be done. So I'm going to start by um, also declaring a string variable called user entry. Although this is the same name as the one we defined in our method, but they are totally independent of each other. Okay, so what we are going to do here is um, here instead of asking for a number and then grabbing that as a double, I'm first going to get the entry as a string and then we are going to validate it. So I'm going to use um, my scanner variable and next line means I'm uh, I'm getting a um, a string from the user. So after we grabbed the input from the user, I now will validate this entry. So I would say um, while check input and that's the name of our method and I'm going to pass user entry to it. Here, if um, this returns true, since our method below is going to return true if it has a string, otherwise it's going to return false. So if this returns uh, true, then I would say I would give the message back to the user and say make sure you put in some um, first number and here I could indicate no letters. So this is just going to keep on looping until this becomes false and when it is false it should now be safe to um, take this entry and parse it into double because if we don't make sure that it is safe to be passed. So if it is a string and then we pass it, then our program is going to crash. Now to pass into double, I'm going to use the wrapper class double, and then I'm going to uh, access the pass double uh, method, and I am going to be passing the user entry now. And this should be safe, because it's, it's not going to get out of this loop until this is false, until user entry has only letters. So let's give this a run and see how it works. So I'm going to put in the value t to one and now it's giving me it, it entered into the because this is given us true so now it's saying only letters so now when i put in number three the program completes its execution so now we can do the same thing for our second number so enter uh, and then we i can reuse user entry because we've already saved the its details into first number so it is safe to reuse this variable and this really depends on your program so make sure when you are reusing var variables this way you make sure you that it is safe that you do so okay so enter second number and now i'm going to get in the while loop and i'm just going to change the message enter second number with no letters and once that's um, fine then i'm going to pass it and getting user entry as a string and then passing the type uh, as needed for each data type is a better way than using the next double and next integer methods and I'll explain that in future videos. Okay so now our second uh, number is also doing good. Now we can also um, do that for our menu. So the menu will also crash if I put in numbers instead of string so I can also do a few changes here I could say um, also I would define string um, user entry and here I would give uh, a message um, yeah no I'd give the message 
just for the user. Uh, enter your choice. And then I would is equal to uh, I okay so this means I also need oh I've got the scanner there so that's okay I've got the reference input dot uh, next line okay and then I'm going to copy this while loop because it's pretty much the same I'm just going to have to change the message there so while check input user entry um, I'll give this message instead sorry no letters and then now is a time where I could actually um, define a integer user choice um, and now I could also pass this and now I'll use because this is an integer so I'll use the integer wrapper class and I'll use the pass int method and I'll pass user entry to it. So this way I can now just return this back to the user or to the main method. Alternatively we can also do this um, but I think for readability because this is also going to return a, a, an integer which is here but I think for, re, um, for readability uh, reasons this is this looks better. Okay, so let's run the program. This should really work. So if I put in a number and then value, so it says no, um, no letters because there's a letter T over there. So then I would say, okay, fine. I'm giving number four. Let's test this. So I'll have numbers and I'll say A, B, C, and then more numbers. So this also went into this while loop. So if this gives me true, so this is equivalent to saying check input is equal to equal equal to true. So now if I give uh, a number uh, again, I'll put in some text. It's just going to keep on looping until I actually put in numbers. So, OK, fine. Now I'll put in number six and I'll choose number one. It gave me six plus four and now I'll put in numbers again. So five and five. This time I'll test this menu. So I will um, try to give it some text input. Uh, I'll say um, add and now it's in the loop saying please put in uh, just numbers. So I'll just say quit and this had actually quit the program. That's it. Um, continue watching the next videos for more um, upgrades to this program.